Excellent. So let me try this. I'm zooming in. I can see with you. With a funky background. <laughs> that was great. That was great, yeah. So, so um, we're supposed to have 150 people, but I don't see it cracking at the edges. I can yeah. see a few faces there that we know. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying out the background. Reboot. Designed on Fiverr. Guess how much this cost me? $41. So um, this is a new one for me because Startup Grind is obviously, I originally thought the Startup Grind was a bit of a competitor to the Web Wednesday community, but I see that Startup Grind is much more organized and uh, much more voluntary and much more aggressive at marketing. So I'm very happy to be here. Thanks to Jens, who's turned up a great supporter of what I do at Web Wednesday. So Caroline and I, uh, I've crossed paths. I've been, we're both British entrepreneurs living in Hong Kong. I think I've been here five times as long as you. Is that right, Caroline? You've been here five years, correct? I have, yes. Yeah, I'm a newbie still. You're a newbie, you're young. <laughs> so uh, today I thought it's interesting. We've got an interesting collection of people here. I mean, it's, we're all about, we're talking about, you know, rebooting. Um, we're we're going to be talking about basically two elements as the, I came at this from the idea of business needs rebooting. And Caroline came at it from the angle of people need rebooting. And obviously, until all businesses are fully robotized, we need people to make the both work. So I think uh, what, what we'd like to do, we've got only got 20 minutes, I believe. So I, I guess we could get straight into it. Caroline, I, I think, uh, you know, I've, I've got a new acronym and it, it's called PCP. It's not CCP, it's the Chinese Communist Party. It's okay. as in protest, protest, COVID, protest. Seems ah. to be the new, the new reality in Hong Kong. Okay. So I believe you, you, got your, you, got, you first got your kind of recruiter concept going in during the protest last year. Is that right? Yeah, so um, I was an executive recruiter for 11 years and I started my business up last year in May. Um, and it was primarily recruitment to start with, but with some coaching. And the protest came the week after I started my business. So um, it was a very sad time, lots of people losing their jobs. And I worked in supply chain and retail a lot previously. So I started getting a lot of messages um, from people saying, can you help me? Um, as they lost their jobs during the protests, because obviously, you know, it, it affected retail and supply chain quite significantly, especially across China. Um, so yeah, I started getting messages uh, from people saying, I've lost my job, can I help? And at that time I wasn't recruiting, I was almost purely coaching. Um, so I started offering my services online, just messaging people back and saying, I can't help you find a job, uh, but what I can do is show you how to do your CV, uh, show you how to maybe optimize your LinkedIn. Uh, and I started researching a lot into that area to start helping people um, on an individual basis. Um, and some of them sort of, I worked with longer term as well on a pro bono basis um, where they had more severe financial si and personal situations. So, yeah. So the interesting thing is this is not necessarily born of COVID, right? This is uh, born of the protests. So you, you were saying that back in November last year, people were already starting to suffer yeah. the consequences. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was also working on a, a suicide and crisis helpline, uh, volunteering in the evenings, even for about a year before. Um, and a lot of the people coming through had lost their jobs. And by September, October, it was really bad. So um, I set up days with WeWork, actually, going into WeWork for a day. They, they gave me a room. Um, and I uh, did sessions, as many as I could pack into a day, for people that were unemployed. And there may be people on this call that that, that, uh, that, that recognize that. And I was just putting a message out saying, uh, either drop in or message me if there's a space, then you can come in and have a meeting and go through um, anything that you want to talk about, about restarting your career or helping you take one step forwards. And I'd be curious, I mean, you kind of don't think uh, that the job loss started happening there. You know, in the media, we're all too focused on people beating the crap out of each other in the street. What what kind of people were coming to you? What you said that obviously retail was suffering, travel yeah. hadn't really kicked in yet. What what kind of people and what kind of industries were coming to you? I mean, you're at WeWork, so I guess you. you does that mean you attract a lot of startups, or is it a huge, wide kind of generation of people coming to see you? 
It was everyone. Um, I would say a lot of people, I would say mainly retail and supply chain. So for example, footwear and handbag product development, people like that at a very base level. But then also that had a knock-on effect to sort of senior level executives that were losing their roles as well. The other area that really suffered straight away as well were consultancies. Um, so exp expensive consultancies and also expats. Um, because the expats were, were some of the first to go if they were on big expensive packages. People were really starting to localize as well. Um, and also expats went home. So um, there, there, there was this big um, influx of people that were primarily coming from retail, supply chain, and, and some travel, it started them because less people were coming here. So hospitality and hotels obviously were starting to become affected then as well. And you, you, you mean, you're all quite traditionally, you know, you're quite a traditional kind of recruiter person. I think one of the interesting things is that you've kind of along this journey, you, you explained to me, you kind of taught yourself again, right? I mean, I, I see yeah, a, a lot of the, the, the rebooting that's going on currently under COVID is, you know, people in their, not just their 20s, people in their 40s and 50s reinventing themselves. Um, yeah. Maybe share a bit about how you've learned. I mean, I know you've got your website now, right? I mean, what was the URL again, your website? The main um, so the recruiters, it's recruitersgiveback.org is the website. Okay. It's full of free resources. So I've kind of reinvented myself twice here. So I was a, an executive recruiter working across the world. Um, then I left my job, started my business, which was initially going to be recruitment, uh, sort of specific recruitment. But then I noticed this shift towards coaching and the coaching became the most important part to help people. Um, and I was doing that a lot more free than I was being paid for, <laughs> for a while. So um, it was a real passion of mine because if somebody comes to me for help, it's very difficult to say no, especially when I know that I have these resources that I can help them with for free and very, very easily. So um, over the last year, I started to completely retrain um, so that I could do my very best to serve all the people that I'm working with um, as an executive coach. So now I'm, I'm coaching across the world at sea level, which for people that have jobs, which luckily is paying for the time that I'm spending at the moment because I'm self-funding this. Um, I also, the recruitersgiveback.org uh, website, I actually built that myself. So well first done. time for everything. <laughs> yeah. you, you're, a, you're now a Wix expert. I'm a Wix expert. <laughs> Can I, yeah, well, nice. do you know what I've learned? So I, I actually swapped, because I'm, I'm a pretty good coach now. So I've actually been swapping my services and bartering. For, for information. So I swapped my services as a coach. I was coaching someone one week and they were a digital marketeer. So they taught me digital marketing one week, I'd coach them the next week. You know, that's really interesting. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm curious that there isn't more of a kind of barter economy that's uh, yeah. grown up off the back of this. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I was thinking, I was thinking, racking my brains, what could you do when you've got a community? What could you do to kind of boost people? You know, you could sit down with them and kind of give them mental guidance, but you need certain skill sets to do that. You could get yeah. drunk with them, uh, but you know, that, where's that gonna go? So yeah. I, I, guess, um, I guess, you know, the idea that I was thinking was just get, give people a platform to promote their businesses, you know, and you do it, I mean, you kind of do it as a give back, but I, I, I'm curious, you know, where do you see that going? Because as a recruiter, you then go into the, you know, when you're guiding people, it was funny, when I set up the Reboot Hong Kong website, mm -hmm. there was a mass of kind of career counselors who wanted to promote their business. So I don't know, if Hong Kong is full of career counselors or midlife yeah. crisis people that think they need to give back. But how, do, how does that work, the whole, the whole counseling side of it? Because you were okay. a recruiter before, right? Yeah, so I, I'm a coach and not a counselor. So the, the, the difference between the two is a counselor actually focuses on the problem, whereas a coach focuses on a goal and a solution. So I'm future focused. Um, there are a lot of career coaches, but I'll be honest, I, I kind of pride myself with my training and my qualifications as well. So I'm International Coaching Federation standard for this uh, to coach people through to the next level. But you know what? Career coaching is integrally linked with, with your life as well. And, you know, keeping that motivation going, you were talking about what you can do. And, uh, you know, I've learned to build a, web, build a website. I never knew I even liked that. 
before I went out and tried something different. And I actually love it. I've built two now and I want to do another one. Um, so, and, and, and that's, and that's going to service the companies that I'm helping as well. And it's actually, I've been doing, I actually did some volunteer work helping someone uh, build their website as well that's starting up their business. So, you know, there's that whole pay it forward thing as well as upskilling, finding something that you love. Um, I mean, that's another thing we, we were talking about motivation and, and, and driving yourself forwards is actually deeply thinking about what you really like doing um, and then start looking at where you can absorb the resources around you. So either the internet or people and skill sharing is another thing. I've just had somebody else approach me and say, um, I really want to help, you know, set this up and work with you on this. And I, I, I actually spoke to this guy and he set up a business. This is the first time I've set up a business. And we were like, shall we, sh you know, shall we skill swap as well? So um, I think actually having these conversations and being open to conversations is really important. I think what I've seen during COVID um, and the protests, especially uh, on LinkedIn and places like that and things like this, People are much more open to talk and we're learning so much more about each other. We're learning about ourselves. We're learning about each other. And it's, it's the, one of the greatest free resources is to actually speak to people. It's ironic, know. isn't it? Isn't it that, that we, need to have, uh, we need to have the distance in order to learn about each other. It's kind of, yeah. kind of counterintuitive. Actually, yeah, um, right, yeah. You know, we need to be separated in order to learn from each other. I, I guess it's like teenage sex. Um, what about... <laughs> So, so tell me about, about, you know, the recruiters give back. I mean, it's an interesting concept. How does, how does that evolve? So it's a resource, right? Basically, you're saying, you know, you, you need to find a new job. Here are the materials. Here are the CVs. This is what you do with your link to LinkedIn profile, et cetera. But yeah. you, you started this in Hong Kong. But uh, wh where is your, you're seeing the kind of network effect, the same way that airplanes are carrying viruses all over the world it seems like this uh, give back has also been spread quite widely yeah. is, is that right it's yeah it's great so um because so many people were connecting with me and i was coaching them and it was mainly the same question so i set up the website and the website originally was just uh when people connect with me, I say, go here, there's free downloads. You don't have to sign in. You don't give your data away. It's just completely open source. Um, and then I kept coaching people if they still had questions. And then people started seeing this and saying, actually, I know someone that can help with this. So what's happened is we're now building um, a network. So I had quite a lot of people wanting to speak to me. Um, and obviously, I have my own business to run. I've just started that up as well. Um, so I started under the same under the same the same name. When you say business, no. So so my 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 own business is Successful Consultants Limited, which is an executive leadership and personal development coaching company. Um, and uh, so yeah, people started reaching out from different countries and now we've got volunteers to answer calls. So if you go to the website and you don't find what you need and you want to talk to a recruiter or a career coach about taking the next step, what you can do next to be resourceful, we've now got people in, and I've got the list in front of me, Hong Kong, Singapore, Thailand, Australia, United Arab Emirates, UK and the USA. Um, and we've got volunteers in all of those countries that are experts in their field uh, that can talk to you. So what you do is you click on the website. So you go to recruitersgiveback.org. There's a connect with us or contact us button on the front. Click there and it gives you the instructions of how to apply. You have to be unemployed um, to speak to someone or threat of unemployment. We're not going to differentiate if you're just about to be made redundant. How do you, so, how do you prove that you're un unemployed? I mean, you, you hold up, you hold up your kind of pink slip and go, oi, this is me. <laughs> We, we, we trust people and it's, it's great. It's, you know, it's yeah. I mean, if you're, in, if you're in the US, I, I don't know, what, what's the unemployment in Hong Kong? I mean, we always read about the US having, what is it, 26 million or whatever. What, what is it in Hong Kong? Do you know the numbers at all in Hong Kong? No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but yeah. I don't think we're at our peak yet. I really don't. So that's I'm really interesting. So you think it's the website that took you kind of global or just the kind of network, people asking each other, wanting help from each other? the nature yeah. of the people in Hong Kong who, who come from overseas. I mean, is your audience mostly uh, foreigners in Hong Kong or are you, are you also tapping into the more local Cantonese community? 
Yeah. So, so to answer the first question, um, the reason it went global is because one of my clients who is one of my paying clients for Successful Consultants Limited, I told him about this and he told somebody he knows in Australia and then it started to bounce. So, so he was your patient zero. He was my, well, kind of, yeah. I've known him for kind a while, of. but yeah, he was my patient zero. And, and, and this is what's kind of happened. I let my clients know nice. and I said, spread the word. Uh, but no, do you know, interestingly enough, I would say at the moment, 70% of my client, of the uh, recruiters give back people uh, are local, local from here in Hong Kong. We have a few Thanks. expats as well. Um, I've got Cantonese speakers um, on the teams here. Uh, Cantonese, Mandarin, Spanish, English, French. Um, but yeah, I, I've had to gather Cantonese because, because I wanted to make sure that, see, the thing is, coaching is seen to be expensive and I want this to be something. How much is it, by the way, out of, out, out of curiosity, how much is it? Uh, what, for recruiters give back? Free? No, I know, for coaching. For coaching, it depends on the level that you're, that you're at yeah. and the coach that you have. It's under discussion. If you want to have a chat under with me, discussion. then please feel free. <laughs> SuccessCL.com. Please, yeah, successful.com. I'll, uh, I'll post my, uh, my website for, for paid coaching uh, in, uh, in the chat afterwards. Yeah, happy to have a chat. So I'm, I'm curious, what, what, you know, now this whole phenomenon of work from home and working remotely, I mean, I, I personally don't believe in the work from home concept in places like Hong Kong, just because A, we don't have big homes or we don't have a, a hut at the end of the garden. Uh, and B, we just like to get out, right? I mean, we like to go out and feed ourselves and, and go out and connect to people. So how are you seeing kind of the future of, now that you're in that space, the future of work, the future of careers, do you think this is a temporary blip? Or do you really think this is changing the way, I mean, the people are going to look at their jobs and are we all going to become part-time workers? Are we all becoming gig economy people? Uh, I mean, most entrepreneurs are pretty gig, the ones that I know, because, you, you know, you're fighting for the next bowl of rice. So uh, where do you see this all going? I'm, I'm curious. Um, I'm seeing a massive shift. And I think the, 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 the main thing for people that are managers and leaders at the moment is going to be managing the return to work. And if you're doing a mass return to the office, how you're going to manage that. On the flip side of that, I'm seeing a number of leaders now that are closing their offices and using, I know three that have closed offices in Hong Kong. Like forever. They've closed <laughs> completely. No, the people is still there. The office okay. space is not. They're all working from home. Okay. But then I've seen a number, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but then I've seen a number of people as well um, where they really don't want to go back. And the return to work into an office environment after three, four months of working from home is a real challenge for them and it's managing that is going to be extremely important for business leaders going forwards so do you i mean you know, we obviously see we read in the media about the big tech companies twitter yeah. facebook saying look you know yeah. work from home but i mean this this is you know america a place with lots of space uh yeah. so I, I just wonder how that would play out in hong kong singapore Kuala Lumpur, shanghai beijing it's, right the, the yeah. whole how, Tokyo, how does, how does that work and the physicality of it? I'm just curious uh, yeah. how that's going to work. And then the, the mentality of it, you know, the, um, the collaboration part. I mean, the, how do you see that whole uh, interaction, uh, collaboration part? I mean, of course, we have a lot of tools yeah. out there, but, uh, you know, I'm not enough of a scientist to see if they're productive or not. I do know that most people who work from home are finding that they're working much longer hours. Yes. Right. They can't they can't stop working because <laughs> probably because you don't have to walk to the end of the garden. There's no commute in between it. But you also yeah. don't have the stress of commuting. Right. So I don't. And you've got your family near you, which you know can act both ways or your pets. Depends what kind of person you are. Yeah. So where do you see all of that coming together or not? It really, I mean, is it all, yeah. all going to dissipate? No, no, it, it depends on the job that you're doing. And, and this is the thing, you know, it depends on what you're doing. So, for example, I was coaching a senior executive of, uh, who was leading a design team and they found remote working incredibly difficult, even though everything they do is online because it's creative and collaborative. That's how you breed ideas. So if you're creative yeah. and collaborative, they actually found it and it's kind of a hands on thing. It was difficult for them. Um, same thing with sort of salespeople where 
their thing is being face to face with someone actually having that personal connection you just don't quite get that remotely uh, you're right in Hong Kong it's been a challenge because of the space um, I know that the shared workspaces have been doing actually pretty well um, even though there have there has been the virus I've seen them filling up um, just purely because people need to get out of their tiny apartments so they're just willing to risk it and just go and be a bit careful just to get that that feeling of being part of something um, but it depends on the business and it depends on the person as well and you've got all these different parameters that I've been working with as a coach which has been fascinating to watch and all these different personalities that are working with it in a different way I mean places like Google Facebook a lot of that is going to be remote it's going to be online they're going to give them all the resources and, and you're right it's not in Hong Kong which is a tiny little space where you're dealing with kids running around and, and and a very small space actually i did a i did an article with sassy hong kong about how to work from home in a small space you know making sure that you have set areas that you get up and move um i use different techniques for people that are working from home so that if you're on calls with europe in the morning and then you're on calls with the us at night that you actually manage to sort of divide your home life and work life up even though you're in the same space. It's really important um, for your own peace and of what mind. About, what about the actual jobs too? Are you seeing, I mean, because I, I think, you know, when we've had crises like these before, it's shaken up people's roles. I mean, during SARS, we had offices split and, you know, it was kind of A, A, A B testing, right? You know, if that office dies, that office will still be alive or banks are particularly good at that, right? You know, they would split their yeah. teams in case something went wrong. But it went back to normal r remarkably quickly, remarkably quickly. And um, part of my part of my my theory is is we didn't have social media, so the kind of frenzy, and we didn't have Trump, so the frenzy of social media and mad politicians hasn't created. You know, it wasn't there. So I don't know where do you see you know, this kind of frenzy. I'm not, I, I, I'm like you said, I work in a co-working space. It's, it's normal. I mean, the only thing is you don't have five people on table; we have two. <laughs> um, where do I where do I see this going? And well, it's as in, as in jobs, the actual jobs that yeah. people do. Because uh, I mean, you know, I you're think, reinventing yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. To a certain extent, I'm yeah. kind of repositioning my business. You know, it's it's given yeah. people a chance to take a breather. One of the one of the failings of Hong Kong, I think, is that everybody's in a mad rush. Right? There's a famous yeah. Chinese saying, which is. Uh, uh, Chima Kanghua, which is riding a horse looking at flowers, which is kind of <laughs> obvious, right? So I think Hong Kong has always been, you know, you're riding a horse looking at flowers, right? And now we've actually got off the horse and we can smell the flowers and go, oh, that one's quite nice. I might keep that one. So um, how, how do you see that changing people's, you know, look at their careers? I mean, is it still the rat race or is it going to change? I have no idea. I mean, I think people have taken a breather to look at what they really want to do. I mean, we, we've said, you know, if you do have the downtime, if you can't find a job, you don't have the money. Obviously, there is a rush to find something to a degree. But take that breather and have a look at what you really want to do with your life. It's the, the perfect opportunity, opportunity to say, actually, I really want to do this. Find something that gives you joy. Start noting down things that you really want to do. Um, and look at that. I mean, I, I, I spoke to someone this morning and, you know, she's worried about her, her, her kid because he wants to go off and be a blogger and do videography. And I said, that's the number one job that's in demand at the moment is uh, digital marketing videography. And she had no idea, you know, that's, so that's one of the areas that sort of people are probably so it's give up banking and go for blogging it sounds like yeah, absolutely. this is what, this is what, this is what we used to say <laughs> this is what we used to say during the dot-com boom <laughs> give up banking go for blogging absolutely go, go travel the world do it from your front room i mean i've set this business up i'm almost running a global business from i've got a shared workspace and i've got people helping me but yeah it's it's basically from my my home online so, so talking about the business model i'm, I'm really curious how this works because we're, we're in a very interesting world i mean the pr people will call it csr but the idea yeah. that you're by giving back you know i mean my intention reboot had absolutely no zilch commercial purpose i just thought this is cool. I'll do it. I like interviewing people. I want to learn how to interview people. I want to turn into videos. I want to try out some crowdsource stuff, see how it works. Yeah. Uh, and what's interesting is that I think you see quite a lot of people doing this now during the COVID thing. People who are doing it just out of the 
pure kindness of their hearts or just you know yeah. and it's kind of maybe when you're in pain you kind of want to give other you want to help other people i think that's the psychological theory but you know where do you see it seems to me that eventually these things actually teach you teach you things that you can commercialize right I, I, I'm absolutely astonished what I've learned. I mean, I, I set up my business as a, as a small startup, and that's Successful Consultants Limited. In six weeks, this has become a global phenomenon where I've got people in organizations coming in and helping me. I'm building a board. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, this is self-funded at the moment, so this is taking my time. I'm now in, this, in, in the process of building a board of, direct, a board of advisors, uh, we're getting funding from lawyers to set up Section 88 so that it can be a proper uh, charity because at the moment it's a non-profit, but we need articles to be tax exempt. So we're doing that now. Um, I'm learning so much about running a business because people are helping. And it's, it's kind of like we're all helping each other. It's really just this lovely thing. For example, I mean, I introduced you to Kitty. Um, who's helping mm. me with the business setup and she's introduced me to several other people and we're all working together to help each other giving each other stuff and basically sharing and pooling resources and there's no expectation from anybody we all just want to help each other um, and that was the thing I mean I set the site up because I thought it'd be easier and quicker than talking to every person about their CV and then it's turned into this thing that was so it's much quite interesting isn't it? it's, it's a kind of exchange, exchange of kindness it sounds very hippie you know what's yeah. missing though is definitely some kind of crypto blockchain currency. Maybe Jens can launch the uh, the startup grind, the SUG. We can have the SUG coin. We can have the SUG coin as our form of transaction. You know, you do me a favor, here's a SUG. Well, that yeah. doesn't sound too, it's not too appealing, I have to say. I think we're running out of time here. So, um, I, I mean, it's great to see what you're doing with this and it's great to see where you're taking it, the fact you're taking it global. And then yeah. you're doing out of Hong Kong. Which Can I just say as well, it was what I loved was I actually met, I, I kind of um, cyber met you before um, because I'd, I'd actually put my thing on eight five two reboot. So when when Yen said it was you, I said, oh, I know him. He does eight five two reboot, and then he said you were going to be interviewing me. So there was such a cohesiveness and collaboration of like we just want to help people. It was really nice. It was lovely. Yeah, it's a good feeling, Jens. isn't it? It's a good feeling. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's nice. So, Jens, are you going to split us apart and take us into some dirty little alleyway on Zoom where we're all going to go and smoke <laughs> cigarettes and stuff? But what's going to happen next? <laughs> yeah, but before that, we're going to we're going to do the 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 the, the Q and A part for oh, about. Right. Okay. So we have actually a, a creepy who asks, "How do we become involved as a mentor on on your platform? So how do you how do you get started?" Yeah, so um, what I'll do is I'll put, I'll put some email addresses, uh, some uh, yeah, email addresses into the, um, into the chat. So if you want to uh, help us, then if you write to support us at recruitersgiveback.org, and I'll put that in the comments in a minute. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll reply. If you can be patient, because I'm doing it all myself at the moment, I am putting together a board now. It's been six weeks. Um, so I'm trying to do everything at the moment. I do have one helper, um, so it takes a little while, but then we'll get back to you and we can work out how we can partner. Um, and if not for now, you know, when things really do kick off, it, it's really good to hear from anybody that does want to help. Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll put that in the comments. Now. What, what I will do as well is I will take those, those and, and put it into the email that goes out to everybody who signed up for the event. Oh, so great. if you don't capture that now, you will get it um, tomorrow. You'll get that plus the video from this event as well. Because I work quite extensively across China, if there are any um, China candidates, then I coach them myself at the moment or help them myself. Um, but yeah, if I've got someone that, that can help in China, that'd be awesome because I've got two or three people who are on a waiting list at the moment. I have a question for you. Yep. So the, um, you know, recruiters, I worked as a, would you believe it, when I was 23 years old, I was a recruiter in Tokyo. I don't know why I had the license to advise men in their 50s what they should be doing or women in their 30s but i was um one of the things i was curious about is you know that we're in a, we're in a world of data right i mean you know off the back of covid which some conspiracists think is just an effort by governments to collect our, our medical data um where do you you know where do you see i mean when you're getting you're interacting with all these people that are talking to you about their careers all this kind of stuff being submitted to what, what's happening with this data i mean it's a 
it's a sensitive thing, right? I mean, well, I don't know. Maybe it's not a sensitive thing. If we put it on LinkedIn, I guess it's not a sensitive. Where we work, what we've done, who we've worked for, what we think of them, what they think of us. Um, you know. No, we're quite careful with that because uh, we've got people in the UK so and also in Singapore, there are quite stringent data protection uh, policies there. So we've got a data privacy policy. So basically, um, all of your data is deleted by the volunteers. I keep the very basics, so I'll have your emails that you've sent through um, just for legalities, but we've got quite a good data policy. It's not a data mining exercise, and all the volunteers, unless they have an agreement from you in writing that um, you want them to keep uh, your details, then they delete everything. So it really isn't anything to do with, uh, with data mining. It's really funny though, because people are quite suspicious. I've noticed this as well. They're like, really? You're just giving all of this away? And I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah I really am. Well, we, I, th I think we've got a bit tainted. We got a bit tainted by the, you know, the fangs and the bats and all of the big, big technology companies. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's interesting as you're working in, you know, in, uh, across continents, uh, I'm, I'm curious also, you know, if, if you do this as a charity across continents, how, how does that work? Do you have to go and register in every kind of jurisdiction to be a not-for-profit or you do it once and you're done? No, I do it once in, in Hong Kong and I'm done. So, I mean, these are just volunteers. They're not actual offices that we're setting up in each, each country. Um, they're not okay. working for us. They're not employed. Um, one thing that we do is I make sure that um, they're all vetted um, we all know them. They're generally referrals. They come from the right background. I speak to them all. We've got recruiter guidelines and we've got volunteer guidelines that we all adhere to um, in, in the same way that we have terms of use for the candidate callers as well. So that the expectation is matched, uh, that what they're going to get is what they expect, uh, which is basically help with the next step. Uh, in their careers as well. So no, we don't need to register in different country, countries. We're quite lucky. And it's, it's kind of interesting because I heard about uh, in, in the UK, people like people that are just wanting to help other people. The government is relaxing a little bit. They're, they're not being quite as stringent. We are compliant, obviously, but it's, it's a lot easier and people are just aware that there are, there are organizations that may not be actual charities that just want to help at the moment. And it's a real collaborative environment to be in. So do we have any more questions? I, I have one is you, you give advice about LinkedIn and people always talk about the photos on LinkedIn, but yours is great. You look like you're having a party. Yes, it's because you know, you're, 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 you're having a good time. <laughs> I mean, you know, all, all corporate photos, you're supposed to be serious and kind of look great. Uh, no. You know, uh, I think, so I is, have you got some advice there for the, are you seeing LinkedIn as a, as a good source or is it getting like a lot of this social media it kind of hits the, uh, it turns into a tsunami of information where people just kind of let go and go, this is too much. I can't swallow it anymore. I think it's like any social media. It's how you manage it. Uh, and also the impression that you give across. I mean, I, to be honest, I've got, you know, it, it, you, you have the odd stalker and you have people that follow you incessantly and, uh you know i control it pretty well it's it's like everything else um but utilize it as well and, and you know what the photo it's your personality it's you it's who you are as well you know and i think that's quite important to come across and uh, do you know what it depends on the impression you're giving so for example if you're in media um or you're an it tech startup you want to look like you're a little bit more fun in corporate banking I know that people like to be wearing a suit and look a little bit more serious. It also depends on the country you're from as well. So, for example, if you're in Southeast Asia and you've got a smile on your face, you might be a little bit disrespected. So it depends on where you come from. So having that understanding is quite important. Very nice. Have yeah. we got any more questions out there? No, I, I think there's no hands up. So in, in that case, what I will do now is I will split us into uh, four different rooms.